He is God. He's got times and seasons in his hands. There is summer. There is fall. Amen. There is uh, what else? Winter. And there's also spring. He's got times and seasons. I thank God for my wife. When God called me to start the work here, it wasn't easy. But we needed somebody to be able to handle the church. The other day we were talking about the, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. I call them the five G's. The apostle is for governing. The prophet is for guiding. The evangelist is for gathering. The pastor is for guarding. And the teacher is for grounding you in the word of God. Amen. So I really thank God for her life. She has been a pastor. Amen. I, I am more of an apostle, so my language is a bit different. Praise the Lord. You know what uh, the apostle Paul said? He calls some people foolish people. Praise the Lord. But a pastor would heal your wounds, would pamper you. Amen. And I thank God for a pampering bishop. Please put your hands together for him. This morning I want to talk about keys to kingdom wealth. When people talk about wealth, they always think about money. When people talk about prosperity, they also think about money. But it must first be spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. So our first focus is spiritual wealth or spiritual prosperity. Bible says, seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added. All other things, including money. Amen. <laughs> Seek ye first. Sometimes you know the first things we seek every morning is our mobile phone. The mobile phone has become a god. It has become a god. That is the first thing we seek. We are looking at what, what messages have been sent to us. Beloved, it is spirit, soul, and body. Even marriage must be spirit, soul, and body. Maybe one day we'll go into that. Now, let's talk, let's talk about wealth. First, it must be spiritual. Build a relationship with God. Build an intimate relationship with God. Know God for yourself. It's called being rich towards God. Our wealth must be God-centered. 
Amen. It must be God-centered. If your spiritual life is not being in order, it's not in order, you, 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 you are, you are, and you are filthy rich with maybe a billion dollars in your account, you are poor. Bible says, what does it profit a man if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? That's more important. This is more important than losing your soul. You need to focus on wealth in your spiritual life. Spiritually, you must be wealthy. The next is the soulish area. It's called solar core wealth. It means an intellectual and emotional development. That is when you come to the soulish realm. So, we, we must focus on developing ourselves intellectually. Seek education. It's good that some of you are here. Seek education. There is nothing new under the sun. Just like the computer is not new. You know, there's a part of, of, of this thing they call the brain. So God looked at all of us. Open up your head. Put one cup. And he sealed it. It's called your brain. Praise the Lord. So God gave you a brain. Use it fully. God expects us to be developed. God gave you a brain with nothing in it. There was nothing in the brain. So it's like a hard drive. It's like a hard drive on a computer. So it's up to you to decide what you download. Amen. Amen. Some people have an iPhone. Maybe iPhone uh, 13 or 14. And that can do so much. And yet all they do is they do this much with that iPhone. Are, are you getting it? So the brain God gave us he says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to come to a place where we buy into the mind of God. We receive from God. When God talks to you, he gives you ideas. So it's called learning. Study, study to show yourself approved unto God, not men. Sometimes when God speaks to you and you go and talk to other people, you, you know that you are not on the same frequency. And if you listen to them, they'll take you out. you go astray. So it's important to become very wealthy in your soul. Go to school. Learn, read books. So your soul consists of your mind, your will, and your emotions. So like I said earlier, if you have a billion dollars in the bank, but don't have the intelligence to invest it, You don't have the intelligence and the knowledge to multiply it. 
and you don't have the wisdom to invest, you are unwise. I don't want to speak like an apostle. I would have said you are a fool. <laughs> Amen. If you have a billion dollars in the bank, but you don't have the intelligence to invest it, you don't have the knowledge to multiply it, and you don't have the wisdom to invest it, you are unwise. Normally I say this, that a short pencil is better than a long memory. So when you look at our videos back home, everybody is writing. Because for some of us, when you leave this place, Satan is standing outside there. He says he'll take it out of your mind. Amen? So it's very, very, very good that you have a short pencil and a notebook. Now, a smart person like Solomon, when God asked him, what do you want? You know what he did? He sacrificed. And God, God said, you know, what do you need? What do you want in life? He didn't ask for money. Some of us will say money. Some will say, I want a car. I want a house. I want shoes. I want dresses. You are unwise. God said, I will give you anything you want. Solomon did not, Solomon did not ask for money. He asked for wisdom. He asked for wisdom. To be able to deal wisely and intelligently with that which God has placed him in charge of. So he asks for wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Place your hands on your head every day and ask God for wisdom. It's in the Bible. He gives liberally. Ask God for wisdom. You don't have to wait for a prophet to come. Be your own prophet. Place your hand on your head and ask God for wisdom. There are so many things that sometimes I do and I just know that this is God. This is the wisdom of God. So wisdom is the principal thing. He asked God for solar coal wealth. He asks God for knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Now let's go to um, Joshua 1. Look at verse number 8. Well, let's start from verse 5. Let's start from verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. So, I will be with you. And God is saying that to you today. As he was with Moses, so he will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. People will forsake you. I don't want to go into other areas. People come to the altar. And today, divorce has become a thing of the day. Amen. Divorce means D-I means D-I means D-I, die. And divorce means the, the, the V is supposed to be an F. It's supposed to be a division of what? force. That's why Satan fights marriages. The Bible says one shall put a thousand to flight. Two, ten thousand. 
That's why he fights marriages. Please, please, please let build that relationship with God and let God protect you in these areas. Let's go on. So he says, be strong and of good courage for to these people you shall divide as an inheritance and the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. And you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses thy servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. That you may prosper. That you may prosper wherever you go. Then in verse 8, I love the scripture. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Meditate therein day and night and observe to do according to all that is written therein. He says, for then you will make your way prosperous and you would have good success. This is a loaded scripture. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. That is knowledge. That is what? Knowledge. Knowledge. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Get into the word of God so you can have knowledge. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Meditate. That is understanding. The first part is knowledge. Many people read the Bible, they don't understand it. They read the Bible, they don't understand it. So first, you need to have knowledge. Read it. Ask the Holy Spirit to to, to, to bring, I mean, let, let that bring life into the word of God. So you can understand it. So the first part is Knowledge. The second is what? Understanding. And it says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. That is wisdom. So there is knowledge, there is understanding, and there is what? Wisdom. Now listen carefully to this. It says, for then Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. He didn't say the pastor will do it for you. No. This is our constitution. Amen. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. I'm also reading it. I'm understanding it. And I'm using wisdom. So then, I cannot fail in life. I would have good good prosperity and I would have good success. There is also bad success. There is bad success. When I read this scripture, it, it, it brought so much light. Many times we don't have time for the things of God. Read the Bible. This is our constitution. There are so many things I found in the Bible that helps me today. For instance, the Bible says, no weapon that is formed or fashioned against me shall prosper. No weapon means no weapon. Bible tells us in John, 3rd John. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. He says, I wish, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. 
Your health depends on your mental state. Your prosperity depends on your solar coal development. <laughs> so wealth, 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 wealth is, is, is an idea, not money. Wealth must be in the mind. Use your brain. Download into your hard drive. Buy into the mind of God. Know what God is saying. Within these days and the times that we are living in. I thank God for COVID-19. I found that also in the Bible. All things work together for good. To them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. All things. All things. All things. I told the church back home that our church now is going to be like a studio. And people did not understand. If you go to, what's the name, TBN, when they started, it was a very small place. But they were reaching out to the world. What did COVID bring? Right now, we are reaching more people than even if we had crusades. Are you hearing me? We are reaching sometimes 7,000 people. 5,000 people, 6,000 people on a Sunday morning. Because of the internet. Amen. You realize how people are doing business when it comes to the internet. These days, some of you stay at home. Is that not true? And you are working from home. Is that not true? Good. All things work together for good. To them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So the next is physical wealth. Steve Jobs, who founded Apple Computer, was worth billions of dollars. But not one dollar could save him from cancer. Are you hearing that? Physical wealth. He had material wealth, but he didn't have physical wealth. Beloved, if your body breaks down, you are in trouble. If your body breaks down, you are in trouble. Recently, I had a, a little accident trying to play football. And uh, I ended up with a walking stick. It, it, it's not too easy. <laughs> Amen. So now that I am growing, I have to take good care of my body. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Very soon I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be three score and ten. So, beloved, if your body breaks down, you are in trouble. It does not matter how much wealth you have, you are poor. That's why you need to thank God. You need to thank God. You need to thank God. You are healthy. Thank God for it. Don't take it for granted. When you wake up in the morning, Thank God. He says, this is the day that he has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We need to thank God. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So that's why he says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. Even us, your soul prospers. Nothing is worse than, than, than laying back. 
laying on your back with good ideas. You can't move, but you have ideas. You must become wealthy in your physical body. Learn to eat properly. Praise the Lord. Of late, I am am learning some of these things. Praise God. Don't eat after six. Amen. (laughs) Praise the Lord. I mean, once in a while, you know, if, if let's say somebody has a birthday, you can, you can eat. Praise God. So learn, learn, learn to, to become healthy, wealthy. God made provision for that. The third area of wealth is your body. Physical wealth. For almost 49 years, I've been admitted to the hospital once in 2018 for 24 hours. Almost 50 years I've been admitted to the hospital once. I should have been dead and buried by now, me. One of these days I'll tell you my story. So exercise and eat properly. Feed your mind with good books. Protect yourself from negative company. Don't go around people who complain all the time. People who are murmuring and grumbling. Stay away from them. They will poison your mind. Those are things you need to delete from your, from your hard drive. People who talk about people, stay away from them. That's what poor people do. Finding fault all the time, always criticizing. You are in a diseased environment. Lose yourself from that. Stay away from them. The next thing I want to talk about is social wealth. Be wealthy in your friendships. Be wealthy in your friendships. There's one thing I love about uh, Uncle Doros. Amen. There was a time that... um, Pastor Nancy came to me and um, the long and short of it is that there is something called friendship discipleship. Say that. So I became his friend. Amen. (laughs) I became his friend. So it was a way of discipling. By the grace of God, some, of, some people have been added to this church. Amen. Those were the things I used to do before. I'll call them. I think this week I've called them like three times. Amen. <laughs> so it's called follow up. Friendship, discipleship. You are as poor as the friends you have. You are as wealthy as the friends you keep. If there is a problem with your mother and father, you are cursed. It's in the Bible. 
honor your father and your mother. Number one, it will be well with you. And number two, you will live long. So if you have a problem with your mother and your father, it's a curse. You are cursed. There are so many curses in the Bible. You see, like today I'm talking about keys. He said he will give us keys to the kingdom. If you have a problem with your mother and your father, go to your mother, go to your father. And make peace with them. Can I go a little bit further? (laughs) Even if you have a a problem with your wife, it's a key. When you pray, God will not listen. Is it not in the Bible? It's a key. He said he will give us keys to the kingdom. Not one key. If he has given you health and you work and you are paid and you don't pay your tithe let's read it go to Malachi Malachi 3 reading from verse 6 Malachi 3 Very, very, very interesting. Malachi 3, verse number 6. For I am the Lord. You see, it's capital. Everything is capital. I am the Lord. Lord means owner. And he says, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. He didn't use Abraham. He didn't use Isaac. He used Jacob. Jacob was a corn man. Are you catching it? Yeah. So he used Jacob. He says, I do not change. Therefore, you, you, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Go on. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. He says, return to me and I will return to you. Return to me and I will return to you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein Shall we return? You see, you see the 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 the, the con the con spirit. He says, even go on to verse eight. So the, God is asking, will a man rob God? He says, wherein shall we return? He says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? What is the answer? In tithes and what? Offerings. You see, when it comes to your tithe, your tithe is only one-tenth. And you have 90% left. It's only one-tenth. That is the least you can do. You have 90% left. Your tithe is what you owe. Like your taxes. Amen. But your offering is what you sow. So even your offering should be more than your tithe. Are you hearing me? I've done this for 43 years. I've not regretted it. Amen. I believe in it. I believe in it. 
Praise the Lord. If some people don't believe in it, I believe in it. Praise the Lord. All right. So he says, will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me. Go back. <laughs> in what way have we robbed you? You said in tithes and offerings. Go on. Nine. Go on. He says, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, when God curses you, I don't have the anointing to pray for you and break it. If God has cursed you, I'll stay away. Go on. Bring all, not some. Amen. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be food in my house. And try me. Test me. Challenge me now. In this. Says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven. And pour out for you such a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. It's, it's in our constitution. Amen. There shall not be room enough. To, there, are, there, there, there were two times that God talked about opening the windows of heaven. The first was in the case of Noah. And when he sent out rain, you see how much rain came forth. So it's the same thing. It's the same window God wants to open for you. So there shall not be room enough to receive it. Go on. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Sometimes go, going to hospital is a, is a devourer. It takes your money. Accident. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground nor the vine fail to bear fruit for you in, in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Go on. And all nations will call you blessed. For you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Go on. 13. I like the 13. He says, you, he says you'll, be, you'll be stout. There's a word there. He says stout. You know, Guinness stout. You see how bitter it is? He says, your words have been harsh against me. The, uh, King James says, your words have been stout against me. Says the Lord of hosts. And you have said, we have, you, we have spoken so much against thee. Go on. 14. You have said, it is vain. Sometimes we say that. It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and, and, and that we, we, we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. Sometimes our words are harsh against God. Maybe you are one step to a breakthrough and then you spoil everything. So, your success may depend on someone whom you don't even like. Be wealthy in your relationships. Most of the time, you don't need money. You need people with money who help you. Jesus kept people around him who had access to resources. Remember Mary? Mary Magdalene? Praise the Lord. From that small village. But she was loaded. She laid money at, at, at his feet. Which today is about 15 to 18,000 dollars. 
He did, she didn't go to the bank. It was in her pocket. When he poured the oil. Do you understand that? That's the worth of it. Sometimes all your friends, all your friends are poor. If you are poor and I am poor, we are in a bad company. <laughs> Joseph was in prison, but Joseph knew he had to develop some relationships in prison. Sometimes <laughs> you, you are making some wrong friends. Wrong friends. Keep away from them. Stay away from them. Get good, rich friends. Jesus decided to make friends with, with, with two people. Uh, Joseph decided to make friends with two people he knew that were from Pharaoh's palace. Joseph cultured that relationship. He interpreted their dreams for them. And he said to them, when you go, remember me. One came out and got his job back. When the economy was getting bad, he said to President Pharaoh, I know a young man I know a young man. That word know. He says, I know a young man. Means relationship. I know a young man in prison. He had a relationship with him. And that's the same kind of relationship we need to have with God. Seek ye first. Build that good relationship with God. First. Before anybody else. For some of us, it's only the wrong people that you know. I know a young man in prison who can solve your problems. I know a cardinal. <laughs> Amen. Who can do what? Solve your problems. It was relationship that brought Joseph to become a prime minister. If you are angry with your wife, like I said before, the Lord will not hear your prayer. So build a healthy relationship. Even if uh, there was this guy, uh, this guy in Ghana who used to talk about marriages. One day, the wife cooked. He had invited people and the food was salty. And he tasted it, he said, mm. and then called her and said, please, would you bring me some more salt? So the wife went and brought some more salt and he added it to his food and ate just to cover the wife. Are you getting it? Yeah. If it were some right in front of people, you start to insult her. So he told me, oh, I, 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 love, I love salt. Is it, is it too salty for you guys? But I mean, I love salt. So that's why I covered the wife. Say amen. amen. Now you, let me put it this way. Make yourself valuable. Make yourself valuable. You do that by making yourself valuable. It's called influence. And that kind of influence, you can have that in the community also. Let God be first. That's where you get your influence from. Let God be first. You must be wealthy in your account. 
and also in influence. God, let God be first. Let God be first. Let God be your priority. Jesus said, when you come to the Father, don't ask anything in your name. Let me say that again. When you come to the Father, don't ask anything in your name because you don't have any influence. If you want something done, use my name and the Father will approve it. Are you getting it? So if you have that good relationship, if you have that good relationship with him, when you go and you ask anything, he said anything, in my name, God will take his stamp and approve it by him. That's it. So build a good relationship with God. Amen. How much time do I have? Let me say this. Poor people talk about people. Poor people. They talk about people. Rich people talk about things. Wealthy people talk about ideas. Poor people, all they are doing is thinking about money. All they talk about is money. I don't have enough money. I need more money. Money, 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 money. Rich people are different. They think about things. This is my watch. My car, my house, my suit, my shoes, my bag. They talk about the things they have. But wealthy people think about ideas. That's why you see a lot of them playing golf. Hello? They go and play golf. That's what they do when they go to play golf. You see them with that small ball. And then they start walking. And they start talking about what? Ideas. Hey. A man with ideas is always wealthy. A poor man has no idea. Wealthy people don't think about money. Wealthy people give people ideas. Sometimes you go to a wealthy person and then you are asking for for them to pay your rent and all those kuminini. Sometimes he looks at you and uh, sometimes you say, no, I, I can't give you that. Do you know why? And sometimes we say they are wicked people. Sometimes that's what we think about them, that they are very wicked people. But that's not not the case. He has worked hard for his money. Are you getting it? So you don't just come and take it. Amen. 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 You don't just come and then You come, you want 20,000. Give me 20,000. And maybe he knows that you cannot pay. Can I give you another good idea? When somebody comes and he asks you for 20,000, praise the Lord. If you can, 
give them 500 and say, this one, you don't, you don't have to pay. Did you catch it? Yeah? Yeah. So stop looking for money. Money is not the problem. It's how to spend it. My wife, my wife is, is shaking her head. Yeah. Money is not a problem, right? But it's how to spend it. Thank God in Ghana, we, we started something back in Ghana. We are building um, 45 classrooms, 15 on each floor. We've got into the third floor. We are now left with the roofing. But God will provide. If God gives you a vision, he provides for his vision. That is, that is the word provision. Do you understand me? If God gives you a vision, he will provide for his vision. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for the people we have back home. Praise the Lord. We have to use money wisely. So in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was with God. All things were made by the word. And the word became flesh. The word the word, the word in Hebrew is translated logos. Logos means an expressed idea. God bless you. <laughs>